we are a little bit behind the schedule, so but that's no problem. Um, I short my talk anyways. Uh, I will talk a little bit of now, now that we will we have some uh, theoretical background. I will talk a little bit about the, the Tinker view. So um, Docker is very nice to to play around with different processes, with different uh, software tools and projects on your laptop because it's easy to spawn different containers, use different environments like. Uh, Olga said, like, have Ubuntu in different versions, have CentOS in different versions, have any other Linux distribution, distribution on, your, on your fingertips. So um, what I will show is uh, where, where my motivation comes from. So it was HPC in the box. There's one slide I, I will show about it. And then I will demo some stacks that I'm using quite heavily. So console, uh, Elasticsearch, Logsearch, Kibana, and the metrics stack that I uh, put together yesterday. Um, um, where I'm coming from, I'm working for Gaikai now. Gaikai might not ring a bell, but uh, PlayStation Now does, maybe. So Gaikai uh, is a company behind PlayStation Now. Um, we are doing video game streaming, um, and we are part of Sony. Uh, it was announced, so PlayStation Now was announced uh, on CES last year. And what this basically, basically is, it's like video streaming, like YouTube and Netflix, but, but um, more real time and with feedback. So. If you uh, have a controller in your hand, then this controller will send data to our servers and change the game. So you are basically running a real-time application <coughs> on the cloud. So uh, it's it's like the network of Netflix or YouTube, um, but with higher constraints. So it's quite fun to work with, and I work there for eight weeks now. Um, and yeah, I really like it. Um, how I'm getting started with Docker, uh, this slide uh, is from uh, the last presentation. So I, I, I worked for science and computing, as it turns out, um, uh, last five years or so. I moved away recently. And uh, I did uh, my bachelor thesis about uh, infinite monitoring. And um, what, I, what I wanted to do all the time was having a hello world for everything. I wanted to spin up uh, an HPC cluster on my laptop. Um, so having the Sloan cluster, having monitoring, having a scheduler and all of this in my, on my little shiny laptop here. But um, I started using VirtualBox for this and after a couple of virtual machines, the, yeah, as you can imagine, the laptop was, was completely screwed. So I put it aside a little while and then I stumbled upon Docker and this applied very good to my problem. So I have a lot of containers, basically virtual machines uh, on my, my laptop and I'm able to run every step, uh, every stack I, I like uh, on my little machine. Okay, so I containerized all the things, and uh, the first thing I, I did, or the first, the first component I'm using now heavily is console. Who's familiar with console? Good, good, good. Console uh, is basically the backbone of my clip terminal, which is a term for my um, for my container environment. It ties together service discovery, the DNS interface, health checks like Navios, and it's a key value store as well. And um, this is, is quite fun. I will give a short uh, demo now. Um, it fits perfectly for a microservice architecture, so you can have different containers on your system, and they are connected via console, and then you can uh, discover new services spawn in your cluster, and you can access information about them. And this we will see. Oh, wait, one's back. And what uh, what um, here, what Holger didn't show was uh, compose. I think that's also a very important um, thing to to know. So you can run Docker containers like this, as he's show uh, he has shown. So I spawn an Ubuntu node, um, but this is quite cumbersome. If you want to compose or if you want to start a stack with different nodes that are linked together, then this uh, becomes very, very hard to do or very, very uh, awkward to do because you have to memorize the different names you give, it, you give the different containers and this is quite cumbersome. What is much easier is using Docker Compose. Um, and Docker Compose is just a YAML file that presents the different Docker run commands and um, and organizes this in a very much sane way. So um, the different sections here are basically the Docker run commands, and um, this Docker, uh, this console node, for instance, is the name of the of the uh, Docker container that will be spawned uh, 
just in a sec. <coughs> um, the image, so it's, it's self self descriptive, right? You have the image that you, you want to start. You have the ports that you want to map uh, in the container, the host name, the DNS, and so on. And um, and the second container links to the first container, uh, which will introduce uh, environment variables, and then you can react on those environment variables. If I now start this stack with Docker Compose up minus D, this will start the two different servers here, or two different containers. If I do Docker PS, we we'll see, okay, I have two servers, or two containers, uh, one of which presents us uh, the web interface of console, which is here. So I have two nodes, console and terminal. One has a console service, one has no service at all. And um, yeah, this is now my, my little simple stack composed of two servers. If I log into the terminal one, I can ask console to give me the members of the server of the stack. I have two um, nodes from the console. One acts as a server, one acts as a client. I can uh, ask him to give me the services running in the server. And um, yeah, this is uh, <coughs> pretty simple. If you play around with it a little bit more, it's pretty simple. I mean, uh, it's some um, learning curve involved, but uh, it solves a lot of problems for me. Um, I just added some stupid services here. So this is how you describe services in console. It's basically like uh, Nagios checks. So you have a name, like IC0. I can provide some text, I provide a port, and then I provide a, a check script. The, if the check script uh, exits with zero, the return code is zero, then the service is considered okay. If it exits with one, then it's considered warning. And if it exits with two or any other and a return code, it exits. It, it, uh, it's returned out as critical. So I put on the, the JSON script in the, uh, in the console directory and reload to console. And now if we go back to the console dashboard, we see that the terminal now has three different services. One is passing, one is warning, one is critical. And um, if I now use the same little script here, which curls just the RESTful API of console, we see that we have these three services here. And if I do another curl query, then I can see that I can query even different um, services just like that. And since console provides a DNS interface, we can also use simple service the service interface, and we can even um, use just simple DNS uh, entries in our configuration files. So <coughs> no hard coding of IP addresses anymore. You can just use the service uh, DNS name for this. So far, questions? OK, no questions. Uh, we'll kill this little stack and go to the next one. This is AUK. Someone, uh, Knows the, the, the EOK stack, it's Elasticsearch Log Search Kibana, which is kind of the open source log analytics stack. Ah, okay. So the Docker Compose file looks quite similar in shape, but we have only one big fat container here. Um, it's what uh, host, uh, what Holger uh, describes as system container, I think, because I have multiple processes in this uh, big clunky um, container. If I start it, so this C up is just Docker uh, compose up minus D. It's uh, an idea. And this starts one container with a lot more ports forwarded. And if I go and have a look at the console interface, we will see one node which is still stabilizing. And we have a bunch of services that are provided by this big. Um, So now all the services are up and running. So if I right here, and uh, what we got is we got a Logstash instance or Elasticsearch instance, um, 
which is a, a text indexing database, but I don't want to get into details here. The simple fact is that you can run, uh, or you can forward your logs to, to Logstash, and then you can tinker with the logs, like filtering them, applying rules, and whatnot, and then uh, it will end up in Elasticsearch, and with Kibana you have a nice interface to look at this uh, as its logs. So if I go and log into, log into this, um, this container, I have uh, this log configured to forward all the logs to uh, my Logstash instance. And if I do a log here, I see 15. Then this will end up in my uh, elastic version. And as you can imagine, this is pretty helpful if you have a big cluster. Um, you can you can use Logstash or similar uh, similar services like Heka, for instance, or Fluent or whatnot to um, streamline your your log process. Okay, that's the OK. Then um, just one more stack I would like to show. Who's using a uh, Logstash, by the way? No one. You grab your log files. I mean, you should really check this this out. It's pretty uh, pretty nice, pretty fancy. So this was one big. Oh, and I have slides as well. I mean, I can, this is one big clunky um, container here. So it's Log Analytics, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana. It's a system container. It's so it's more like a big virtual machine. And I think that's the first step that is natural to use Docker with uh, to Docker use Docker. Um, that you mimic what you know from virtual machines, and then you provide or you create one big container that has SSD, uh, uh, SSHD running, that has all the heavy services that you're running in the virtual machine as well. That's uh, natural um, iterations or evolution on it. It feels more like one big virtual machine, and it contradicts uh, the mantra of one process per container that Holger presented as well. I mean, this ideal way of, of using Docker or Unix containers would be one process, but I think that's most likely not the case. The last um, stack I would like to present is a metric stack. I use Carbon, InfluxDB, all the uh, nice and shiny um, open source tools for metrics collection. And, oh, and this is really a, a service container. So I have a main service that is running in one container. And it has also a console agent for connecting the console cluster and a syslog daemon to have natural uh, logging facility inside of the container. And it's close to one process per container, even though I have this housekeeping services that I, I keep. Okay, so let's start this stack. It composes of a lot of containers, so console, carbon, graphite, API, Grafana, metrics. And if I spin this up, both. It starts them in the right order so that they can link together. And if we have a look at the, at the console interface, we see them coming up, all services, all nodes. And we see that the relay, which has uh, also a nice uh, web interface, is now taking in uh, metrics and forwards them to my uh, carbon instance. And by doing so, I can view all this metrics uh, with Grafana, which is uh, a nice JavaScript dashboard for metrics. And if we wait some time, then we can see all the metrics coming in. So this would be the carbon uh, backend uh, as front-end, I have Grafana in the version 1.9. Um, as a middleware, I have Graphite API, which just provides a RESTful API to all the metrics. And uh, this is how it turns out. To put it one step further, I also no I now start an Influx DB instance, which links as well to the, to the console, uh, console server. So if I start this, 
then we will in a couple of seconds see that now we have uh, another uh, network metrics coming in so influx to be obviously started this is the influx DB web interface And now we see that all the metrics are also not only stored as uh, in the carbon instance, but also in the influx DB. And um, <coughs> I start another dashboard. I can compare both metric subsystems on my fingertips. So here we have Grafana 2, which is a nicer version of Grafana 1.9. I have the same dashboard that I pro provided for, um, for uh, the graphite backend here, so it's the same metrics. If we compare them, they look quite alike. Um, and now that I have influx, I can go to the influx DB backend and I see the same metrics with a different backend. Since I started just a couple of seconds ago, I don't have as much data, but that's obvious, right? So, yeah. And uh, since I use console, and with console I can orchestrate my configuration. It automatically um, detects there is another metric sync for my uh, metrics and it provides or it, it um, adds the, the second uh, metrics backend to my relay so that I can now send metrics to carbon relay and G and it will automatically <coughs> send metrics uh, to the right back. And I can here use uh, regular expressions to match different metrics and send them to different backends. Uh, InfluxDB, for those of you who don't, don't know InfluxDB, it's a Go, um, Go project, pretty, f pretty recent one, or not that recent, maybe a year or so. But it's an in-memory database for time, for time series data, which is kind of nice, whereas Carbon is um, the default backend for the Graphite universe, and it uses an iteration of our deep tool files. So for every metric, you have one single file, which is kind of yeah awkward if you have millions of different metrics and you don't want to deal with millions of files. So in the, by using InfluxDB, you have a more uh, sane way of having to deal with a lot of. <coughs> okay, so this is just a practical tipping my toe into what you can do with with Docker in, in terms of stacks. Um, I, I, I'm a little bit short on uh, on slides because I thought, okay, after the introduction, it would be nice to have some some uh, practical insights. Um, and as I already knew that we will be we have a dense uh, <coughs> workshop and we will be short on time, I limited myself to 50 minutes. So uh, that's that's basically it. Questions about this? Otherwise, we will go to the next speaker. I, I saw that you were using the DNS-based uh, API of console. Yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts of uh, what the users might be for using the DNS-based API? Because I have found none so far. You mean like? Uh, um, you, ma you mean uh, the dict command I use? Yes, yes, yes. If with this, it's pretty. <coughs> it's pretty natural to. So if I now <coughs> dig for the service entries for my carbon <laughs> service, and I have mm -hmm. two now, or metrics, I think it's metrics I renamed it. Um, or is it carbon? No, it's carbon. So if I have multiple services, uh, yeah. console automatically round robins the different services, and you can, you, and you have, if you have different ports, it provides you easy access to, to, to this information as well. And um, I think there are a lot of tools, or since Unix has uh, the capability of using DNS mm -hmm. for, for, for everything. You can just put this carbon service console DNS name into your configuration file and you do not care what IP address, if the IP address has changed or if the service is down or what have you. It's, it's very easy and natural to use DNS in configuration files as okay. it's around for 30 years or so. And, oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. And so would, would this be uh, <coughs> use console, for instance, like a replacement for pacemaker or other Tools? Yeah, I'm not sure about pacemaker, um, but I think there are a lot of a lot of um, yeah mm -hmm. re replacements that you or a lot of services or a lot of orchestration work that you can do with console that you mm -hmm. otherwise 
have to do with a lot of different tools that you have to plug together. Before console, I used etcd and skydns, so I, I used different backends for orchestration and I had to put uh, a lot of ugly bash scripts in my containers to provide information which service is running and which is not. And, and here it's just as simple as putting uh, a little JSON snippet into this folder and uh, it will provide the information directly via DNS or via RESTful API. And there are libraries for all the major uh, languages which you can use to interact with this information. Or you can just curl the RESTful API as I showed in the first, first mm -hmm. demo. So console for me, it's a very easy way to um, orchestrate and deal with different IP addresses in a very uh, yeah, flexible environment, to say the least. So because if, this, if the service check determines that the service is critical, then it will kick it out of the interfaces. So you couldn't uh, use it in DNS anymore. You couldn't use it in the curl interface <coughs> anymore. So you do not have to care much about your service. If you stop the service, it automatically gets kicked out of the DNS round robin and then everything is fine. So for me, it helps very, very much. And yeah, with, cons with containers, it's since it's a very little um, binary blob that you put there, you don't mm -hmm. have any dependencies. You put the console console is written in Go, obviously. Uh, you put the, the binary of console there, and then uh, off you go. OK, thanks. Yeah, And to show the console configuration file, also JSON. So you can forward the DNS to, to Google or to any other DNS server. So if you ping Google here, it will act as a, as a natural DNS server. So if you haven't checked out uh, console, it's worth it. Um, I promise, and it's quite fun because it's very easy to use. Okay, so kill everything, and then uh, we can go on. I think Alex. Yep. And now the stacks are gone. Very easy. 